So we've seen how these environment variables are set and used, but what are they actually for? Well, many programs use these shell environment variables as configuration options, and the shell is one of them. For example, if you had an environment variable called temp and its value was set to be the directory slash home slash fred slash temp, then that might possibly be the directory that various programs use in which to store temporary files. Adjusting the environment variable would cause the temporary files to be stored in a different directory. Now, every program is going to have its own particular set of environment variables that it looks at to determine the current configuration. Those environment variables can usually be found at the end of every man page. So, for example, with the program called Vi, if you wanted to find out all the environment variables that Vi uses, you could look in the Vi manual page, usually right at the end. Please note that if you want an environment variable to be used by a program like Vi, it's usually not enough just to set the environment variable. You also have to export it as follows. You just type in the word export followed by a space followed by the name of the variable that you're trying to export. Note, do not put a dollar sign in there. For example, export PS1. Let's have a look at that. Here is uh, my name variable again being set to mark virtue. Now if I was to create another shell just using sh and then I type in again echo dollar name, I find that it is blank, it's completely empty but I did exactly the same thing. Notice that I'm actually running a second shell here. This is not my original shell that's running this. The second shell that I've just started has no knowledge at all of the original environment variable. So I'll now exit my way back to the first shell and where I will find that the name is set. Now in order for the second shell or any subsequent shell to be able to examine name, I need to export name like that and then I can create a second shell and then I can do echo dollar name and then find it is indeed set to mark virtue. I go back to the original shell and it is set again to mark virtue. Now I use the second shell there as an example of any subsequent program that the shell might possibly start. Any program that the shell starts will not have access to the environment variables that you set unless you have exported that environment variable. So that's quite important. I'll now show you a few common environment variables that you might find being used on a regular basis in your shell and other programs. I'll just go through them quickly. Lines and columns are two environment variables that contain the number of lines and the number of columns on your current terminal. Let's have a look at the values of both of those. And you can see that I've just echoed the values, both of them out, and I have 24 lines and 79 columns. The variable called home is the name of the directory that is your home directory. This is quite an important environment variable because this is the location where all config files tend to get created. Not all, but most. If you have a program like uh, Mail, for example, when it starts up, it looks in your home directory for its configuration file. So does Vi. How does it know what your home directory is? Well, it looks at the environment variable called home. Home is also where the program called CD will go. If you type in CD with no arguments on the command line, it will go to the directory specified in your home environment variable. Log name? Well, that's used by a few programs to determine the current username. It's used by mail, for example, to know which mailbox to attempt to open. And that doesn't mean you can read other people's mail by changing your environment variable because you actually have to have permission as well to read other mailboxes. And the mail environment variable fully specifies the directory that contains the mailbox. The shell uses that environment variable to check in that mailbox periodically to see if it's changed. And if it has, it puts out a little warning on your screen saying, you have new mail. The environment variable called mail check is also used by the shell to determine how many seconds it should pass between checks on the aforementioned mailbox. 
Now Path and PS1 we're going to have a look at in the next two modules, so I won't talk about them here. Now Shell, that should be set to the actual file name that contains the shell that you like to use, like slash bin slash sh. That environment variable is used by programs like Vi and Telnet to obtain a shell session. If you've started Vi, for example, or even Telnet, and you're using those programs and you want to obtain a temporary shell on the current machine, in the case of Telnet, the local machine, I should say, then those programs actually examine the environment variable to determine which shell you like to start, and then they'll start that one for you. Also, there's an environment variable called term, which is your terminal type, which is an index into a vast database of terminal types that programs like the shell and various other programs look at to determine how to interpret keystrokes and other terminal-based options. I won't go into those in any more detail at the moment, but the next two modules deal with both path and PS1.